Asylum Art here. First off, I just want to say thank you for all the likes and subscriptions since my last tutorial. You guys are awesome. I'm really humbled and excited to have you here. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss using textured brush tips. And what do I mean by a textured brush tip? They're brushes that operate like this. And you're probably really familiar with these types of brushes. They're commonly found in most brush sets. The important thing about this type of brush is that it layers and blends, meaning you can change up the colors and as you build your layers with them, you can get some really cool effects. Because they allow you to layer and blend, you can use just one brush over and over or use a combination of different ones. They're very versatile, though this brush I'm showing you here is too decorative that I'd probably use it as an abstract background texture in my portraits. The main thing you want to pay close attention to when choosing texture brushes is what goes with what kind of texture you're looking to replicate. So keep in mind, it's always good to have references of the material you're painting. Because if you don't understand how color and light affect the material surface, then it will be hard to capture that realistic feel. There are all sorts of different kinds of texture brushes, but I like to think of them as brushes that replace standard hard and soft brushes. Painting texture is all about building layers, and I want my brushes to add to that texture I'm building. I had mentioned the Light Oil 2 brush in my blending tutorial, and one of the reasons I like it so much is that it is a softer texture. You can see it's not very defined, it's got a little haziness to it. That works out great to blend with and do soft shadows, such as a cast shadow because it's also going to add to the texture that's there where a standard soft airbrush would erase that texture because it's flat, there is no texture in this brush. And you can see how different they are when I put them side by side here. I'm not saying you can't use a standard soft brush, I do use this too, but I recommend doing it in moderation because it can undo a lot of your work. Other soft textures that I'll be using are the Pastel Square and Soft Square. They're a bit more defined than the Light Oil 2. You can see the details in these are crisper. And when I pair the Light Oil 2 brush with the Pastel Square and Soft Square, it creates a nice layering effect that I would use all of these together in blending and building my layers. And this might be a good way for you to test a few of your texture brushes by making a little swatch and just see how the brushes layer and if they blend well or not. The Dust and Pebbles and Snow is a very soft texture that's good for brushing over my painting to add some fine grainy details. Because it's a really loose texture, I would probably use this more for touching up or showing some bumps in a highlight as more details show up in the light than in your shadows. It's really easy to overdo texture with a speckled brush like this, so be careful with that. For harder textures, I'll be using the Hatch brush, and I put the Soft Square in this column too because I would use either of these in place of a hard brush. These are good for laying in line work, like if I hit cracks in the ground or wrinkles in clothes or even the edge of the lips before they transition into the skin around the lips. They're great for refining edges because the brush tip has a crisp edge to it where you can see the Pastel Square Light Oil 2 and Dust and Pebbles do not. So if I use those softer brushes on an edge, it would blur it and not give me clean, crisp edges. Something to look out for when you're picking your texture brushes. For an example, I'll be using a portrait study that I did last year. This was the first portrait I painted in CSP and before their update where you could import Photoshop brushes. I was really having a time finding brushes I liked and that had a good quality texture to them that also blended well. And I felt very limited by the default brushes which I painted this with. As you can see here, her skin is very soft, that it looks weird compared to the background, her hair, and her shirt that have a lot of texture to them. This makes her skin appear flat, and even the transitions between the values are choppy. So I'm going to add texture to her skin and show you why it's important to include texture in your painting and the difference it can make. As I said before, painting texture is all about building your layers, so that's a lot of what I'm doing here. I'm reforming all the shapes and using my texture brushes to blend the values that are already there. 
Everything in life has texture. You can see, as I'm painting over her skin, how the light oil 2 brush is allowing me to stretch the values and blend, while also taking away how flat it looked before. There are no hard and fast rules to painting with texture brushes. It's really finding ones you like and that work for you and what you're painting. Just experiment and as you keep changing out your brushes, your style is going to change too. These brushes that work for me may not work for you, and that's okay. You're going to find brushes you like that become your signature in your painting. I'm also fixing the gradient as I go through here, and that's been making a difference in refining the shapes of her face. You want to watch places where your values are losing definition because you may have too many values or it's not blended, that you either get a bunch of lines or splotches in your painting. That usually if you just enlarge a softer texture brush and make a few passes over those parts, it will blend out. You may have noticed I'm rarely ever using anything other than my light oil tube brush. If you could find a good blending texture brush like this, you can use it to do most of the heavy lifting on your painting, where you'll switch up to others just where you need to break up the repetitive texture and give it more of a separation in values. Sometimes overdoing a texture can make the painting get muddy and lose clarity. And you can see where I started to do that here on her neck. It just looks like a mess. Earlier I had mentioned using soft brushes in moderation, and one of the places I would use it is where I'm starting to get too heavy with the texture. I would grab a soft airbrush to smooth that area out and start over with building that texture again without entirely losing those base values. This has really come together. For a finishing touch, the background is missing some shadow that I'm going to touch that up so that the light to shadow makes sense and it doesn't look flat. To do this, I painted over some dark blue with the standard soft brush and put the blend mode to overlay. I'll be mentioning blend modes in the next two videos. And here we are. You could see a huge difference in the before and the after with how her skin is painted not just because of the textures, but also how these brushes allowed me to blend the values better than the brushes I'd used before. So definitely play around with your texture brushes and find what works for you. That includes playing with the brushes settings. But what kinds of texture brushes do you need? How do you decide? This all depends on what you're painting, right? As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, study the materials you want to paint. Like for portraits, I would study skin, hair, metal, glass, cloth, alongside having references to see how temperature and lighting change the surface and colors I need. You can even make your own still lifes of materials and experiment with this. Speckled brushes are great for painting skin, rock, sand, dirt, dust, because it can all create these porous and grainy details that these materials have. When I paint skin, I like to use brushes like these for blending, adding highlights, or blending a soft edge shadow. And that would be my light oil too in the dust and pebbles and snow brushes. An example would be where the light is going to hit the skin because that's where the details are going to show the most, such as for highlights or blushing on the cheek. I also use different texture brushes when I'm painting clothes because depending on the fabric I'm painting, the stitching will be different and that detail is really going to show when the light hits it, more so than in the shadows where they would get lost because the details are so fine. As I said in the beginning, these texture brushes are very versatile things to have in your art arsenal. It's all about having the right tool for the right job, and just one brush can have multiple uses. So just a little food for thought as you guys find texture brushes and start experimenting. The goal is always, what can I do to make the material I'm painting look more authentic so when people see it, they'll easily be able to tell what it is. I hope this helps you to find ways to use your texture brushes. Thanks for watching, and happy painting! Uh -huh.